In the last video, I showed you how to make this cumulative frequency line from the cumulative frequency data which we calculated in the spreadsheet, and this is for the Japan census data with the number of people in certain age ranges as ever. But I mentioned at the end that maybe on a cumulative frequency graph you don't want it to count up to the number of people you've got, you would like to count up to 100% of the people, and so this scale would be a percentage then, which is quite useful to see where halfway is, and that sort of thing. And to do that we need to do a tiny bit more work in the spreadsheet, we just need to calculate the percentages. This is not too bad, you can see I've made a column for cumulative frequency percentage here. Uh, and that's going to be the cumulative frequency which we calculated before divided by the total number of people. Uh, which is actually just going to be the bottom of the cumulative frequency because it's when we've counted everybody. So I'm going to do E2 divided by E23 and to turn it into a percentage which is easier to read off, I'm going to multiply by 100, otherwise it would between, be between 0 and 1. Uh, Stunningly enough, the first percentage we count is zero, but there is going to be a problem if I copy this formula down, which you may have spotted already. If I copy this down, everything else is turned up with a question mark, uh, and it's not obvious straight away why that is. Uh, this is a common problem to have with a spreadsheet, and it's actually because this formula is now looking in E3 for that number, which is what I wanted to do, but it's looking to divide that by E24, which is this cell at the bottom, which has got nothing in it. So I need it to tell the uh, I need to tell the formula not to change the E24. Um, E23 cell because this one is looking at the right one and I need to use the absolute cell reference to do that so I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the E which tells it to not change the column although that's not a problem in this case but it's just maybe good practice to tell it not to move it and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 23 to tell it not to move the row so it's always going to keep that cell reference fixed to E23 it won't change that formula but if I copy that down we should see percentages turn up here because it will always divide it by this number at the bottom so let's just copy that down there we go. These are the cumulative frequency percentages. You can see I get to 100% by the end. So that's all well and good. All I need to do now is plot those numbers uh, alongside the class boundaries like we did before. To do that, I'm just going to hide the previous line we made in the other video, leave a bit of space, and I'm going to select these class boundaries, hold down control, and select the cumulative frequency percentages I want to plot. And I could either click on uh, create list of points like I did before, or you'll notice I could jump straight to a polyline, which is what I've ended up with last time in this menu, or just to remind you the other ways of doing it, you can right click and click on create and you get the same options here. I'm going to jump straight to a polyline because that's what I want. And you can see it has created a whole list of points, there's a few surprises, they've all been labelled and I don't really want that to happen, so I could select all of them with the right button dragging there and right click on one of them and turn off the labels, that's probably better. Um, also, it's a very uh, very shallow line, that's because this scale is huge and this numbers now only go up to 100 on the vertical axis, so I need to gra grab this axis by holding down shift and dragging again and get this back to a sensible scale. I've got to go all the way until I get to a range that shows, there we go, the line's beginning to come up now and you see it is going up to 100, which is very useful. Other useful things you can do with this uh, is maybe easily read off things like the median or the quartiles. For example, I could type in the uh, the line y equals 50, and you can see that's going through, and it's precisely at 50% of the way through the data. So whether inter these two things intersect is going to be quite a useful situation, because that will be my median point. Now you can see this polyline is called g. If I hover over it, you can see that it's called g. Uh, so actually what I'd like to do is intersect the line I've just made. I'm, I'm typing in the word intersect. I'd like to intersect the line I just made, which is called H, with the line polyline G. And you see it's made a point at that point. And I could uh, actually get that object to show its... Uh, I could show by clicking on the uh, I click on its value. And then you can see that my median is at 47. So what this is telling us is that halfway through the data, we have an age of roughly 47. And you could do something similar with lines at three quarters of the way through the data, or perhaps a quarter of the way through the data, in order to read off the quartiles. So you can see once you've got plotted a cumulative frequency polyline here, uh, you can do all sorts of things, and this is a useful way to do it in GeoGebra.